Hey everybody, a very warm welcome to the show. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Easton, and this week we're focused on the art of excellent communication as we attend a global forum dedicated to the topic in Sharjah. We'll speak to a member of the ruling family of this Emirates, and he also just happens to be the chairman of Sharjah Media Council. We in Sharjah used to uh, be very closed. But now we are showing them that it's okay to be uh, open. A little bit later on in the show, we'll speak to the WHO about where and how to source the most accurate information relating to COVID-19. The WHO um, recommends all the time, you know, sharing of information in a very transparent way uh, on a timely manner. But first, let's hear from the experts and get the headlines from the International Government Communications Forum in Sharjah. First launched in 2012, the ninth edition of IGCF brought together global communications experts to explore best practices in the field. Key issues included the impact of media informing public opinion and how effective communication can benefit body and mind. Speakers included the actress Priyanka Chopra and the veteran journalist Michelle Jean, who is the former Canadian Governor General. She defined communications through the prism of the North American society in which she lives. Communication per se is, uh, is about respect. Uh, and to respect, you have to listen. And by listening, you have to, to include. Having been sworn in as Governor General in 2005, Michelle promoted the democracy, freedom and human rights of Canadians for five years, inspiring a generation of young men and women. Whilst in office, she came face to face with the man who served as her inspiration, a newly elected President Obama. She says they shared a view on good communications and they also shared the belief that they were making history. The first thing we said to each other is, who would have thought that the Commander in Chief of the, of the United States and the Commander in Chief of Canada, myself, would both be of African descent and in office at the same time? Uh, and um, there's something that we shared profoundly uh, is the importance of listening. For almost five decades, Sharjah's leadership has leveraged communication's role as an engine for positive change in society. Its media council is spearheaded by Sheikh Sultan bin Ahmed Al Qasimi, who in 2009 established and restructured Sharjah's TV and radio operations before launching IGCF, which amongst its pillars has strengthening public interactions with government, adopting advanced digital education and boosting innovation in the media sector. In a country made up of more than 200 nationalities, I spoke with His Highness about how mass communications was best achieved in such a diverse and media-savvy society. Your Royal Highness, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you, thank you for having me. You've spoken in the past about something of a communications revolution which has taken place in what we're calling the new age of media. A revolution would imply that change was somehow needed. What was the catalyst? Uh, I worked in a time where TV was the uh, first thing you see and the uh, mobile was, was the second uh, screen. Now the uh, mobile phone is the uh, first screen that you see uh, and the TV is the second screen. As government, as uh, people working in the government, we need to be as fast as uh, everyone else uh, with technology. So uh, that's a revolution. How would you sum up the press in Sharjah? How would you describe the media landscape and how do you want to push it forward? We in Sharjah used to uh, be very closed. Uh, a lot of entities in Sharjah didn't want to be open to public and open to uh, media. But now we are showing them that it's okay to be uh, open. It's okay to talk about your pros and cons. Uh, if you have a problem, if you say it, it's better than someone else talking about it. Uh, and we are improving in Sharjah. We are uh, taking this forward. Speaking of transparency and increased openness, what are your opinions on a freer press here in the United Arab Emirates and more freedom of speech? I think uh, th there's a very thin line between uh, being uh, free to speak and between being uh, if I, if I could say, uh, root. <laughs> uh, but I, th I think we're in a culture that understands that. We do have freedom of speech. We do have uh, ethics, though. We do have ethics that we adhere to. Uh, we always uh, look at the uh, 
positive side of uh, the freedom of speech, and we're, uh, we're actually all for it. To what degree do you believe that public opinion is being formed, that attitudes are being shaped by the news that the government releases, and should this be the case? I think it, it's a two-way road. I think even the public should be able to persuade uh, the governments to do things that they want. Uh, at the end of the day, the, uh, the government is uh, here to serve, uh, to serve them. Everybody has an opinion, everybody has a good idea, everybody can share their ideas, even with the government, and uh, we open our uh, doors and our minds uh, to, to the public. Uh, a lot of uh, things that happened in the Emirate of Sharjah is because the public demanded it. Your Highness, you've been candid about saying a challenge of recent years has been to change people's perceptions about Sharjah. So I have to ask you, what were perceptions back then and how have they changed now? I think um, for people who were in Sharjah, uh, let's say 15 years ago, uh, might notice a big difference in the way we communicate. They would definitely see that uh, in the past, uh, a lot of uh, entities in Sharjah, they used to have the closed door policies. If you don't speak about anything, no one would know about it. But this is also a good time to, to be clear and to be, uh, to be uh, truthful about uh, what you have. Looking back through history, it's perhaps fair to say that certain parts of the world and certain media organizations portray the Arab world in a particular light. It's not easy to control nor influence that. How do you take a view? I think if you need your picture to be uh, painted in a nice way, you should be the one talking about it. And I think you always have to have the right tools and the right way of talking about it. We have to touch upon COVID-19, which is dominating media headlines across the world. Do you agree with those who say that the media is somewhat responsible for sparking a panic about this virus? And is it the job of governments to calm people down? I think government should always be the one who calms uh, people down, but I think also they should do it uh, the right way. I think they should do it the scientific way. The UAE has done a good job in talking about it, being clear about it, saying how many cases we have in the Emirates and how they're being treated and uh, how we should be uh, careful uh, about it. Your Highness, it's been a privilege. Thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you Thank very much. You. In times when a virus like COVID-19 poses potential threats to countries around the world, people look to many varied sources to keep up to date. Salim Saeed puts this information under the microscope and analyzes the way in which good and bad news is being spread and interpreted. They say that knowledge is power, but too little could be potentially dangerous. With COVID-19 focusing minds and dominating headlines across the world, filtering out what's true from what's not is key. Which perhaps rings true for many in the Middle East and North Africa, which saw its first case of the condition confirmed in late January. In the UAE, health authorities are looking to spread the right messages. And in Dubai, I met with Dr. Hin from the Dubai Health Authority, who is informing residents of the best health practices at this time. What are the biggest misconceptions that people have about the new coronavirus? The biggest misconception about coronavirus that they think that it is uh, an airborne disease. And this idea is, uh, is not correct. Uh, co coronavirus is transmitted by contaminated droplets, by coughing, sneezing, or a contaminated surface or area. To feel safe, Dr. Hin says, people are following trends such as wearing masks, which she advises against. Fixing the mask and adjusting the mask. If you have a contaminated hand, you may transfer the, the, the germs into your face. An infodemic, meaning an excessive amount of information, be it accurate or not, is taking place around the world right now, some experts say. Which means that potentially wrong information could be spreading faster than the virus itself. And whether the content is intentionally misleading or not, it's causing some people to react fearfully and make poorly informed decisions, which could lead to serious consequences. The World Health Organization has declared misinformation and fear as some of the biggest challenges they face with the new coronavirus. Their website has a dedicated Mythbuster section to counter false rumors such as claims that consuming garlic or spraying chlorine all over your body can kill the virus. In the MENA region, some public gatherings and major events have been cancelled, and some schools have been shut down due to concerns about mass contamination. The WHO says governments sharing accurate data helps lessen social anxiety. It will reduce the panic and the fear that is commonly seen in emergencies, especially when it comes into outbreaks. Uh, so WHO um, 
recommends all the time, you know, sharing of information in a very transparent way uh, on a timely manner. The WHO says that while there are many cases of COVID-19 worldwide, its criteria for declaring it a pandemic has not been met. The citizens in these countries are using social media almost as one of the main sources of information and as one of the main sort of uh, tools to share this information uh, compared to you know, different countries around the globe. Often inaccurate, online rumors about infectious conditions are nothing new. According to children's psychiatrist Dr. Ammar, who has witnessed some parents refusing to vaccinate their children against measles, believing that certain vaccines could cause conditions like autism based on social media misinformation. What happened is that ch ch some children got measles, and measles can spread very fast, and actually there were fatalities. So in short, it's doctor's orders when in doubt, rely on trusted sources, perhaps just once a day for peace of mind, so that the only thing that goes viral are mindful health practices. That signals the end of our show from the Emirate of Sharjah. We hope that you enjoyed it and do be sure to catch all of our programs online at Euronews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some inspiring Instagram posts we like this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Irina from Russia enjoyed meeting the futurist Professor Michio Kaku at IGCF. Saad and his co-writers from Kuwait were thrilled to launch their book at the Sharjah Forum. And MRT Dr. Jamal shared this video about protective hand washing.